Hello, everyone. Hope you are well. I'm your host, and welcome to The Simone Bailey Show. Today, we celebrate episode 15. Thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please show your support. Click that like button right now, subscribe to my channel, and share this stream so others can enjoy this as well. A huge shout out to all of my subscribers. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your love and support. Support. We will be taking some questions from the live chat in just a bit. Want to let you know I've got this awesome new feature, Super Chat. So if you guys want to support the channel, consider sending a Super Chat. Today, I am here with none other than actor Kevin Otsuji, who played Toru Sato, also known as Bull, the number two blacklist racer in the video game Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. Kevin was also in five episodes of Stargate SG-1 as Oshu, and you may also recognize him from his roles on Altered Carbon, The Man in the High Castle, The Babysitter's Club, Riverdale, Smallville, Arrow. He also played Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat Legacy, and he's the voice behind Taro Kitano in Hot Wheels. Let's bring him on. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Hi, <Hey>. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin has over 87 credits to his name, and I am delighted to have such an accomplished actor joining me today. Kevin, welcome to the show. How are you? My pleasure, Simone. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. And to the audience, uh, apologies for a bit of a slight delay. I, I'm not that technical. That's <laughs> <laughs> work. work. But you're here, and I'm so excited. I know the fans are really excited to see you. We have fans that love you from the TV shows and movies that you've worked on, and a lot of fans from the video game Need for Speed Most Wanted. So I'm going to dive into some Need for Speed questions, and then we'll get into some other questions about your incredible career. Uh, in just a bit. So you played Bull, one of the antagonists in uh, the game. You were the number two racer on the blacklist. Can you tell us about your audition and your inspiration for the role? Do you remember it? <laughs> I, honestly, I honestly don't remember the audition. Can Candace uh, had cast that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, she was the casting yeah, I, director so, for that. I don't know much about the audition, but I remember uh, just playing it, trying to be badass, thug, um, thug-like, uh, intimidating, whatever. At that that time, sorry, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you did such a great job. I, I can't recall the audition at all. Really. Weird. Do you remember going to EA for the... I remember going to EA. I remember shooting it. I remember we're in the North Shore Studios, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. and green screen. And I'd never done... So I think Stargate, we had green screen, but it was more like the like in the background. So I guess they'll fill in it with some, some visual effects. Whereas this, the whole set was all green. And... Yeah. Um, going on chat about the experience of yeah exactly so that was very odd to me i'd never experienced an, an entirety of 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 all of all total greenness um, but super <laughs> cool. I, do recall, I do recall for back in the day um for all you uh, for everyone watching and listening who's not in the the film world mm -hmm. uh i recall before when we were on tv or film sets uh there's a, an area called Video Village, and that's basically where you can see playback or you can see what's on the monitor. But there are these crummy little small black and white um, uh, screens, and mm -hmm. that's where the director, producer, writer, you know, they watch the performances, and they'd be like, "Cut, print, or we're going again." And for Need for Speed, I recall they had, I think it was four massive, huge flat screen. And I think this is when flat screen just came out. So I remember going to the studio, I was like, they have these massive monitors. It was uh, it was like, uh, these guys are technological. 
technically advanced. It was it was quite it was quite something. It was amazing. A wonderful experience. Yes, that is awesome. So was this the very first video game that you'd ever been in? Yeah. Yes, I believe I believe so. And it was really interesting in that they they filmed us and then I guess put a lot of filters and animation through it. I know I went to the EA um, offices downtown and I was just floored at how, how I literally a floor, if not more, just banks of computers and people working on exactly that to make to give it to give our characters uh, just a, a very uh, animated video game ish feel. And I thought just aesthetically very pleasing. So. Yes. They did a ton of work, and uh, I know you were involved. I mean, really, you were. Uh, how was your experience on? Oh, <laughs> I love it. Um, I loved it because I had always wanted to be in a video game, and this was my very first video game experience, and it was really exciting to me. And I didn't know what to expect, so I remember that too. Where you know other. Um, movie shoots or TV shoots. Yeah, the monitors are really small, but there it was so giant. And they would invite us over to, to look at what we had just filmed and they would instantly superimpose us into Rockport, into this fictional uh, computer generated looking world. And it was just so awesome. Because it's one thing, you know, to use your imagination and to trust like, okay, this is gonna be great. But when you really see it, I mean, this game sold over 16 million copies globally, and um, wow. to this day, people still play this game. And it was an award-winning really? game. Yeah. So, yeah. I can see why, and uh, honored to be a part of that, uh, with with and to be included in such fine company as yourself. Yes. Well. Ditto. Do you um, have any memories? You got to work with uh, the other main cast members, Razor played by Derek Hamilton, Mia played by Josie Marin, and Ronnie played by Paul Dezankiu. What was it like working with those actors? Well, I remember, uh, so R D Derek, Razor, mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was a cool guy, I just remember. He had, I think he had sleeves of color that they they used his real well, I mean I shouldn't say it or not I don't know if you know I don't want to. yeah his real tattoos um oil sleeves but a, I just thought he spoke in such a gruff uh manner um I thought wow yeah I, I would cast him too perfect uh Mia um wonderful uh she was a Supermodel or model, I believe. Yep, and she was on um, anyhow, Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Didn't catch that uh, that edition, mm. but but I, I could see why, sure. And uh, and 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 Ronnie Paul, um, great, great, yeah, great, great, great cast, great character. I remember. I think Paul had played up the kind of um, uh, he, he had a certain vibe to him, which was uh, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was last to work on. It was a it seems like a whirlwind, and uh, it's a while ago, but uh, a wonderful, wonderful time. That's awesome. So I'm curious, were you much into cars growing up? Did you have a dream car when you were younger? Oh boy, when I was in high school, I think it was that the 300 ZX, the 300 ZX. That was my absolute absolute favorite nice um i drove a honda prelude I, I still like i still like driving stick shift i have an ultimate coupe right now mm -hmm. I, I just not a total massive car guy but i mean i like the supras i like the. of course i'm a guy i like the nice i like the nice cars yeah so that was a real treat yeah well i know the supras are hot in the need for speed world that's cool do you prefer playing a villain or would you rather play the hero? I used to always play the villains <laughs> before. And uh, I, re I remember one time I was going, how come I always get cast as the bad as the bad mm -hmm. guy? And then I think one time I got cast as like, I don't know, a main character's best friend or roommate or something. And I, I was thinking, it's kind of boring. <laughs> not, not boring, but compared to 
compared to being an antagonist, I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so much fun because you can be and do and, and uh, behave however you like. And it's, it's, it's all wonderful. While I was in you know, real life, I, I try to be a nice guy, right? So <laughs> uh, I, I love playing. I love playing. I like. I love um, getting into the the psyche. Um, clearly, I wouldn't do certain things or behave in a certain way. But I love piecing the roles together, like it's a it's a puzzle. So mm-hmm. that's uh, one thing I super enjoy about about playing the bad guy. Oh wow! Yeah. Great. I've seen that picture before. <laughs> so if how about yourself? Oh, for me, I, I like I like everything. Well, because I came from theater, so I really love playing characters. But a lot of times people don't know that I necessarily have that background or range like that. So typically the roles I get are like action, cop, you know, other things that are, that are, you know, things that I get. But um I have done some comedy and I really love doing that. I love doing action because you can't really fake it. You really have to run. You really have to like shoot those guns or whatever it is. So I find a lot of fun in doing that. But um, I think I would love to do some real character stuff. I think that'd be great. That's uh, it's coming up, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the, the action stuff, it's just, I mean, we're, it's, it's much fun. Someone. <laughs> Did you uh, grow up playing video games at all? Yeah, uh, yeah. I played. I played a lot of Street Fighter back in. Oh yeah. Um, and the Doctor Fuga and the the Thogo and the Chun Li's. Um. Uh, I don't know. She did that little spinning hook hook thing, and then she go at the end. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was a huge. Uh, Player. That I, uh, I want to dress like her for a Halloween costume. Oh yeah, you'd be perfect. Thanks. Be perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. I did play a little bit of Mortal Kombat, but I have to say that my and I played a Mortal Kombat character, which was which was wonderful. Uh, but my my uh, uh, my love was Street Fighter Two. Mm. Absolutely. Nice. And later on. A bit of camp strike that was i lost about two years of my life <laughs> playing that uh, but a lot it's a lot of fun did you ever get to play need for speed most wanted 2005 and play yourself i think i played at a friend's a friend's place honestly i i was not i was terrible at i was not very good i think i yeah, no, I'm um, so sort you know, to all the fans out there, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I played it once and I was, I, I, just, I was just terrible. So <laughs> I, I didn't really. <laughs> I'm not great at racing games either, but I, I think they are fun. I'm, totally. I'm a bit of a, a uh, crasher, but uh, not, not intentionally. <laughs> you, are, you are a crasher or you're not a crasher? You no, I do no crash. Line. I do crash because I find I can't get the the right touch. Like I overcompensate. But I think I, I need you're like oh that hair and oh yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if Need for Speed ever asked you to come back and revive your role, would you? Of course, absolutely. That'd be fun, that wouldn't it? Total joy. Yeah, a bit older now. It'll be lots of fun. I love it. So you played another iconic racing character in an animated TV series. You were the voice of Taro Kitano in the Hot Wheels franchise. What do you enjoy most about working in voice work and how does it differ from working in TV and film? Was the audio getting on a little, can you repeat that? What I enjoy most about uh, voice, was that it? Yeah, what do you enjoy most about working in voice, doing voice work and how does it differ from working in TV and film? Oh, uh, 
voice was uh, a new thing for me at that time. I think that was my first voice project I'd ever done. And um, it was so relaxed. I remember going to the studio and everyone's just in a t-shirt, sweatpants. Uh, um, and I was floored at the ability of these voice actors who, again, this was my first time, but I was, um, they were voice actors for like the Transformers and He-Man and G.I. Joe, all these amazing iconic shows. And I remember uh, a director was saying to the next to me, um, make a bit kind of New York, New York street. And he mentioned a certain area and I could hear the person, uh, the actor adjust his voice. And then he said, okay, make him a bit, a bit gruffer, a little bit, um, a little bit more throaty and then a little bit older. And the guy did everything for me. I just used my regular voice, right? Um, but I was, I was so impressed. And the microphones. Wow. I mean, I don't, I'm sure they, they cost, a massive amount, but everyone just sounded amazing. So um, that was my that was my recollection. I, I still feel like uh, doing that. But that was a that was a really that was a really fun um, fun set of uh, I guess films or DVDs. You can call. You them. did so many, and that was your very first voice gig. That's incredible. Like you must not have known it would go on and on for as long as it did. Oh. I had no idea. I even think they had, um, uh, you could go to McDonald's. I have, a, I got the car somewhere. You can go to the drive through and get like a happy meal or whatever it was. And you can get my character's, my character's car. And I thought, yeah, that, so cool. that is so cool. I think even Toys R Us even had, I think a, like a full on poster and t-shirts and backpacks and merchandise like that. So that was pretty neat. Yeah. My, my young, uh, niece and nephew were like, oh, that's my uncle. So that was fun. That is fun. So you've done so much. Have you been able to do conventions as a guest for uh, any of the animation or gaming conventions or Stargate or anything? I've gotten invited to do a few, but I've, uh, I've just been, I've been busy. The schedules didn't work out. And so I, I, I haven't, I haven't done it. You know, what's so um, funny is I was, offered to do conventions and at first I turned them down and I was offered to go to Australia and England and all these places many years ago and I turned them down because I just wasn't sure if I could do it you know with my schedule and all that and and then I finally went to conventions and I realized it's the best thing ever and never to miss them so you should definitely really? yeah they're so much fun and you get to meet the fans and and do panels and sign autographs and take photos with people it's, it's really cool so we should definitely make sure at some point that we do uh, a convention together whether it's for stargate or need for speed that would be really cool that's right stargate has a lot of conventions yeah. as well right. so let's see if there's any uh we'll just take some questions from the live chat if you guys have any questions put them in the chat let's see some people are like whoa you played sub-zero holy moly uh let's see oh it's just awesome oh so they want to see your McLaren. Let's see. I've got it. So this is one of your cars from the game. This was the Mercedes Benz SLR McLaren. Boom. Nice. Look at that. Gorgeous. That's a ride. Oh, I love that. Yes. Uh, I'm just reading if there's any other questions before we move on. <laughs> Everyone loves you. Thank you all for being in the live chat. Thank you. I can, unfortunately, I can't quite see the live chat, but um, yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, Oh, someone asked what kind of car do you own right now? And you just answered that. 
I have a six speed Ultima uh, coupe. Nice. Which is, um, have fun, fun driving. That's cool. Uh, you mentioned. Uh... Yep. What's that? Oh, you're just saying you mentioned us. Uh, someone had a question about Sub Zero before. No, they said that they, they couldn't. They didn't know that you were Sub Zero, so they were really excited about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had the the the, the face thing me on and the Japanese kind of samurai outfit stuff. That was a lot yes. Of fun. That's amazing. And, uh, those stuff. Wow. Yeah. They're talented. Very talented. That is so cool. I want to learn a little bit about your background. Tell us where you grew up. I grew up in uh, North Burnaby. Um, for people not in the, in the bank, it's a suburb of Vancouver. So uh, I just went to uh, Burnaby North High School. Mm -hmm. I, I took uh, drama when I was grade eight, probably to meet girls. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I quickly. <laughs> Think on it. Come on. I mean, you know, hey, well, I'll take you know. Yeah. Um, I, I quickly fell in love with it. I really did, and I fell in love with acting, and uh, I loved being in the the skin of another character. Uh, I was quite quite introverted and shy as a kid, so perhaps oh. that was a bit of just just my avenue of uh, of self expression. Um, hmm. And so I'm and fortunately. I mean, I. You know, Vancouver at that time was, I guess, beginning of Hollywood North. So just by virtue of uh, sheer luck of location and a, a passion and desire, um, I, I fell into it. Well, we're glad you did. What did your family think about your career choice back then in the beginning? And how has that changed now that you've had so much success? Uh, my mom was just the one, she just said, like, do whatever brings you joy, right? Uh, she was very nurturing and supportive. My wow. dad had always, been, um, you know, uh, that's fine, but yeah, treat it like a hobby. And mm -hmm. my rebuttal to my dad was, the dad, I, if I'm going to be competing against everyone who's giving a hundred, 110%, if I treat it like a hobby, that's all it will ever be. Mm -hmm. So um so i kind of went screw that <laughs> and i decided to to just go full on in and 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 trained and took the um you know a lot of classes we studied a lot of theater scenes and, and whatnot and um that was a lot of hard work a lot of blood sweat and tears i remember rehearsing um, i don't know uh three four times a week and we had a pretty strict teacher who was like look you get exactly you get out of it exactly what you put in so it was um I guess a good a good work thick and uh, and like I said I've I, I've been very worked very hard but I've also been very fortunate and very blessed and um, yeah to, to have uh, worked with uh, so many amazing actors producers writers uh, directors throughout the years I mean yeah if I get hit by a dump truck tomorrow I'm I'm happy I mean <laughs> well, let's happy. let's I'm hope you don't happy. but yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I feel very fortunate, so, yeah. Thank you, AR-15. Toru's McLaren was my favorite car in the game. By the way, do you know if Razor gave that car to Toru on the game? Big love and thanks for the memories. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know the answer to that either, and thank hmm. you, AR-15. Thank you so much, and, and yes, please, uh, great uh, that you're supporting Simone's channel. Um, I would assume that Razor would have given a card to Toro because Razor was he was the leader. He was he was the the, the king of the hill. <laughs> was, uh, our, our group. So anything that Toro had, I'm sure. Yeah. Through Razor's approval. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I'm curious. Do you speak other languages? I mean, I've done about uh, seven, eight projects where I had to speak Japanese, but I'm not, I'm not fluent. Uh, I mean, I've been to Japan. I can understand about twenty percent. We've got the, the. Oh my God! Have you been to Japan? No, that's on my bucket list. I, I mean, I've been to the airport on the way to Southeast Asia, but.
but I really want to go to Japan. You'd love it. And I'm pretty certain everyone there would treat you just amazing. The people there were so courteous. I, I mean, I'm uh, I'm second generation Japanese mm -hmm. Canadian. My parent, both of my parents were both born here. So, uh, I mean, if you hear my mom speak, she, no accent whatsoever. Um, yeah, my mom so too. I went to Japan. My mom doesn't, doesn't have an accent either. It's, it's kind of interesting, right? <laughs> but my mom was, speak, speak a little bit? my mom was born in China but she doesn't have an accent. Um, I, I know <laughs> it's like a lot of the languages I know, I know the bad words or for Chinese, I know how to order like dim sum and certain foods. <laughs> and I know like, hello, happy new year, that kind of stuff. But I have had to speak Chinese in my last uh, TV role on blood and treasure. That was my first openly, uh, Chinese role and it, I was so proud like that I finally got to play Chinese because I always play other races in Caucasian but yeah super cool yeah. big question how much more preparation did it take you to have to speak Chinese in the role well the dialect of the Chinese I had to speak was not my my mom's native dialect. So I actually used a friend of your and mine. I used uh, our friend Charmaine uh, and she coached me. And I, I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and it is not easy to, to speak Chinese if you don't speak it. <laughs> it's really <laughs> challenging because just the slightest like ew, or whatever it is like, nuances it changes the whole meaning of what you're saying so you have to be really specific <laughs> that, that would be that'd be candy right because yeah what you could say something but it could mean something completely different based upon your intonation yep right yeah so you got to know what you're doing i think yeah i think it's mandarin but someone's like there's ma 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 I'm like they all, they all, they all I, I can't i can't differentiate mm -hmm. so kudos to you but yeah I've, i found it very uh similar it takes me literally like four times a, a lot a lot more work of prep just because you've got to have you, you've got to have access be able to access the, yeah. um, the, the, the dialogue just without thinking and so it's just over and over and over and over <laughs> but it's fun it's so much fun it is fun i love being an actor right. and when you nail it you're like yes i did it yeah so i'm curious when you look at a person that and they're like, yeah, you're like, oh. <laughs> I'm curious, what other jobs did you have before you were an actor? I think my first job, I delivered newspapers as a little, a little boy. Uh, I worked in a restaurant, Japanese restaurant. Ooh. Uh, I washed dishes and then I worked the grill. I could make all the teriyaki. I could make the tempura. I could make the donburis. I could make, I, I, could make all the sauces. Then I moved to, uh, you know, Kame Sushi at that time in um, Vancouver, I guess, was kind of like, oh, like the special place. So mm -hmm. I actually ran the kitchen there for, I think, a little while. I learned how to make sushi, uh, which is actually, to be honest, not that difficult. It takes a lot of prep time, right? You've mm -hmm. got to cut vegetables and so on. So um, you can make all the sauces. Uh, um, I did some merchandising for uh, real estate. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you so do you like I cooking? Cook a little bit. I have a sushi. Uh, I do. And lately, honestly, I'm a bit lazy, so I'll just get some <laughs> store bought stuff. I get I get takeout because it's a lot of prep, right? Um, I enjoy cooking for if I've got a few friends. And yeah, I I enjoy it. But uh, I'll be perfectly honest. Lately, I'm. No, oh really? I I'm the opposite. I love cooking. I find it really meditative, and I just enjoy the whole process. Ba baking as well, or cooking? No, nah, I don't. It's probably good. I'm not a big baker because typically a lot of stuff people bake is not the healthiest for you. But I, I mean, I live in LA, so I'm growing a lot of my own vegetables. <laughs> I'm like. Enjoying oh, gardening super. and cooking things. Yeah. I saw on your, um, uh, when we were in the, the just before this, I, I, mm -hmm. I had checked out your channel and I 
I saw you had uh, some yoga. You do yoga. Yeah, I'm a certified yoga instructor, and I also used to teach people how to teach yoga for their certifications. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What what type is style? What style do you? Um, so I or? well I typically would do power yoga um, in the heated rooms. I really enjoy that. Um, and then I also did sculpt, which is like yoga with weights. So that's pretty, I, I, I typically did a lot of more athletic yoga, but then to counter it, there's another style called yin, which is the opposite of instead of flexing your muscles, you actually want to disengage your muscles. And it's a way of like really, you know, chilling your body out. Um, and they're all beneficial practices. So, yeah. Get into the, what the, is it the, called the fascia? Is that of your muscle? The fascia. Oh, fa fa fascia. Fascia, okay. yeah. Yeah, you want to yeah. Um, so release certain things. <laughs> right, yeah. right. It was interesting. I, 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 I tried yoga for the first time. Uh, I guess probably about five or six years ago, I was a guy that would always just go to the gym or I'd have a girlfriend and she was like, oh, go to yoga with me. I'd be like, I'll, I'll drop you off. I'm, I'm going to go to the mm. gym. I'll, I'll drop you off. About five or six years ago, I decided to, to try it. And for all you guys out there that, you know, go to the gym and we're, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Yeah. I remember if somebody said, Hey Kev, there's, there's half a million dollars right, like literally right here if you can do everything. Or whatever, keys to a brand new house if you could do everything. I, I physically could not do it. It was, it was so hard. And then it became a, a, a challenge. And I, I like a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching the people, like you're doing power yoga, doing the arm balances. I was like, whoa, that's so cool. The man stands. And um, I, I just, I fell, I fell in love with it. And then to the point where you, I was dripping, dripping yeah. sweat. Not one, and then I enjoyed some yoga as well. But, um, and then I think one time I was like, all these people are doing handstands, handstands. And I, I just keep on falling over. Like in class, I'd, I'd go at the very front, um, not in front of the instructor. Cause I would probably fall into them. Yeah. Uh, but I, I kept, I probably about a hundred times. And then one, there's one time in class, I, I think, I, I kicked up and I was like, oh, I'm, wow, I'm actually like, I'm holding mm -hmm. it. And then two seconds later, mm -hmm. but, uh, and then I'm better, but, uh, yeah, it's a really good workout and you only need the space of a, of a yoga mat. And, um, and then I, I became aware of, um, more of, um, I guess the calming meditative process mm -hmm. to where I guess it's like a year or two and I found that the um the physical um physical aspect of it was almost secondary to this 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 meditative calmness and it yeah it, interestingly enough it reminded me a, a bit of when i took martial arts when i was very young as a kid and it reminded me of yoga as well too where you got, got a it's like you're focusing on on nothing but everything at the same time yeah or at least, at least that was my perception right like if i especially if you're doing a balancing pose, right? You can't think of anything except for that, that moment. Otherwise you fall out of it or, or I would anyways. Yeah. So I found a way to parallel to acting. So um, for all you girls that practice, fantastic. For all you guys, um, give it a shot. It's, it's, it's quite a challenge and it's a really good workout too. So anyway, and I still have, I still have weights, but I just, I noticed that um, yoga and I'm like, Hey, we're, you know, we could talk about that for a while. Yeah. Yoga is interesting because a lot of people think they need to be flexible to do yoga, but you actually do yoga to become more flexible. And a lot of people start off thinking it's a physical thing, but it does, but it is more of a mental spiritual thing. But I used to teach professional football players. And so when the football players are off season, they put themselves in these yoga training sessions. And the reason is, is because they're using all different skills than they would um, just doing their exercises for football. But I also, you know, I would take classes and Wayne Gretzky would be, you know, he's a famous uh, hockey player, obviously. 
he would go to yoga twice a day. And then I also taught um, a uh, Oscar nominated director and, you know, he would come in all the time. So it was really awesome for me to, to be able to teach people that were top of their field, but yet they still need something else, you know, to support themselves. But one of the, the challenges of yoga is, can you hold these challenging positions and still be completely calm here even though you're forced to like do something very physical and it becomes actually a metaphor for life so anyway no i won't go too deep into that but yes i'm i'm very uh, thumbs up on yoga oh, i I, I, lo <laughs> I love it sorry for you viewers who are like really really, really amazing and um yeah, you get into so many, things. and wow, you core. And looking back, it was a it was an easy class, but at that time, it was really hard. Yeah, I couldn't really walk properly for a few days. Like my ass hurt, my abs hurt, all these little muscles in your foot, in your legs, in your core. Anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're, also, we're not used to supporting our entire body weight. And a lot of times you're in inverted positions, right? So it it's very challenging. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah 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 so you were in five episodes of stargate sg1 in seasons seven and eight you played i'm gonna try to find the photo oh i love this you played oshu use first prime do you remember working on the show Hello? I think I'm either I'm or you're okay. What do you remember working on the show? That's right. I do. What, what do I remember working on? Yeah. Because that must have been really exciting. That you're. Oh, super. That exciting. your character recurred over two seasons. Time. Yeah, that was my first uh, guest starring um, role ever. And I recall, I think it was either during the audition or right after, it was like, um, uh, I just worked with the director again recently, uh, Martin. Oh, Gordon, he's great. Um, on, Martin is fantastic. I worked with him on um, a few episodes of, of Virgin River. Uh, I think, I mean, the third season that hasn't, I think they just aired the second, so I can't really talk about it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he gave me my first guest star role, which recurred, and I played uh, Oshu, which was the first one to Lord Yu, and I remember the character was that my god, my lord Yu, was going losing his faculties, losing his mind, his memory, mm -hmm. and so my character had to go behind his back for the good or survival of, of, of my character's people. Um, so that was, that was wonderful. And we had, they made these, um, the costume was, it was cloth, but it looked like chain mail, or mm -hmm. at least that's what it reminded me, um, when we were filming it and just this, this, yeah, I, I loved it. What, what a, that's an incredible what a costume too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. I could have, I was, I remember thinking, give me any, uh, give me any scene on that thing. I know the, I, I feel like I, the character and I were one. Mm -hmm. So um, I identified with that. Well, maybe not identified, but it felt like a part of me. So yeah, um, yeah that is a special, special uh, place in my heart. Oh, so you've done so much in your career. What's been the highlight? of your career? Is there a performance or performances that you're most proud of? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I can't pick just one. I, truthfully, there, there's so many wonderful ones. Um, one highlight, I don't know if it was a performance or, or not, but um, astronaut we were filming for a few months in montreal it was a miniseries called uh, race to mars 
complete to meet uh, Canada's first astronaut in space. So we have a table read, um, or not a table read. Oh, we lost him. He'll be right back, you guys. I think he's having um, some internet connection issues, but you're right. Thank you to the live chat. GMD Gamer says, Taro Kitano is a memorable character, most definitely. Let's hope we get him back in a flash. Oh, here he is. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Tim. Sorry, I that was. Perfect. I guess that was my. I don't know. I, I'm at home, so. Anyways, we yeah, of, your audio is is cutting in and out. I'm not sure if it's the connection. Sometimes, if you have other windows open, I don't know if you do, but I don't think yeah. so. Can you? Hey, I mean, I can I can go on the, like the earbud thingy. Would that be better? Uh, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm on my phone, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. for whatever that was. Uh, what was I saying? Um, so I was asking, yeah. um, are there performances that you're most proud of of all the ones that you've had? Right, right. Uh, Sub Zero was a lot of fun. I had to speak some Japanese, and that that was a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in the snow, filming the Seymour demonstration mountains. That was a lot of fun. Um, uh, the astronaut thing was really cool because, like I said, we got I, like in front of me was, was a real person that had been in space, uh, and we got to ask what did it feel like as he was you know, as the jet fuel was propelling them up in the space, uh, they're counting special things like, um, there's a word for it when. Oh, <laughs> again. <laughs> hey, you guys. Yes, that was Sub-Zero. Thank you for that question in the live chat. Oh, here he is. Thank you for your patience, you guys. We're having a little bit of technical problems but we're, he's back yeah Hi, Kevin. We, weird. I, don't, <laughs> I don't think there's a storm or anything this is bizarre but uh in any case yeah the astronaut stuff um um ocean uh, stargate was really cool uh mm -hmm. sub-zero was really amazing um it's it's not uh not filming tv but i i felt like a fraud without doing theater so i did a uh a play uh, was based upon Haruki Murakami, who is a very, quite a very famous novelist. And um, so there were some roles there um, that I played that I, I super, super enjoyed. And it was mm -hmm. a real treat because I got to play, um, uh, I got to perform based on a series of short stories of one of my favorite authors. So. Oh, that's awesome. Um, It'd be like uh, Paulo Coelho is one of my or Coelho Coelho, uh, the author of the uh, the Alchemist. Alchemist, yeah. So he's one of my favorite authors as well as um, uh, Haruki Murakami. So he's mm -hmm. he's well known for Norwegian Wood and a ton of others uh, novels that have been translated to many different languages. So that was a uh, that was a unique highlight. But unfortunately, that was not unfortunately. Uh, it was not TV and film. It was it was on stage live and. Uh, yeah. It was interesting. I remember other actors saying that every audience has a personality of their own. And it's so true. I never experienced it. Some are more um, tepid, some are more reserved, some are more boisterous. Um, but uh, it just oh, we're it depends on how much um, they've had to drink maybe before the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> Yes. What have been some of the challenges of your career? Challenges. Uh, letting go, trusting, mm -hmm. um, being relaxed, and being relaxed only comes from a lot of uh, a lot of preparation and a lot of um, a lot of work on the motivations between each line um i guess 
I was a very shy kid. So when I first started, I always wanted to be perfect. I wanted I wanted the scene to go exactly how I had imagined and planned. But when you're when you're um, performing across across another actor in in real time, you, you can't pre-plan that much like life. Like we can't pre-plan this interview. The moment like you just mm. other, or if we look very stilted, it would look very fake. And yeah. so it's 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 let it's letting go. It's not. I would. There, it's almost like um, by not caring. That's not the right connotation, though. I mean, I do care, but it's it's surrendering, not, maybe. Surrendering, yes. Not caring about the the outcome. Doing like you would yoga, martial arts, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing in sports, you're in the moment, and you go moment to moment to moment, and at the end of it, you've just got to let go and uh and do your yeah. best next time and if you and i've just found uh fortunately for myself i just feel more on skin i live and experiencing more things and um uh i i love i love performing i love being on set i love i love the cast i love i love the crew i love chatting mm -hmm. with them the hair people, the makeup people, the grip, the um, the sound person, the script supervisor, the, the caterer, the location, anybody. There are so many interesting yeah. people. And um, honestly, truly, I mean, it is a wonderful joy for me to be on set, uh, to, to the privilege of being on set um, whenever I am. So that's a that's great answer. Work. No, it's a great answer. Who inspires you as an actor? And is there any uh, actor out there that you would like, you would love if your career emulated their career? Oh my goodness. When I first started acting, my heroes were uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Marlon Brando, um, any one of those. I just, I, I watched their films over and over and over again. Um, one of my favorite actors who sadly no longer with this, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. When yes. I saw him, uh. You know, his performances are just so real, so truthful. And I was watching some interviews with him and he just looked like a, a real guy uh, in Manhattan. I believe he would just didn't want any sort of celebrity, or at least that's what I that's what I saw and was just mm. trying to get to the truth of whatever he was portraying. And that's kind of how I, I view the characters, whether they're a big character, small character, whatever, an antagonist approach, whatever. Um, I just want to try to get to the, um, the, the truth that might sound a bit cliched or idealistic, but honestly, um, that's all I know how to do. And it feels so good mm -hmm. to, to, when I feel like I've connected truthfully and, there's, I see it rarely, maybe like once every five or 10 years, sometimes not even, a lot of times, not even when, it, when the cameras are rolling, but it might be a rehearsal or sometimes, or way back when in acting classes, it would be like maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute and a half at most. And it was just this undeniable human connection it, it's it it's just beautiful and when i see that yeah. moment I, I it it reminds me of ah yeah this is why i wanted to be an actor so i love that i love that sorry i'm a son i'm a i'm a sensitive i'm a sensitive guy <laughs> I, uh, yeah whatever. is there a role that you haven't yet been able to play but you've always wanted to play do you have a dream role Ooh. i was able to play a little bit of a like a world war ii um uh, japanese american um mm -hmm. my family went through the internment so unfortunately in, in canada wow. you know they, they lost they lost everything uh i've done a few short films and a few projects dealing with the internment um, but I, I thought it'd be interesting because I think Japanese Americans, yeah, Japanese Americans in the second world war, they fought in Europe 
and I guess they felt the need to prove themselves. And they were the most highly decorated um, unit. And I know that there's been a few stories. I don't know if there's been an audience for it, but um, I had a small role in a show called The Terror, and that was a period piece, and I played a lieutenant or captain or something going to war. Um, but I'd like to, I'd like to explore more of that. Um, was I, I it, like period pieces. Was you, it this? Oh no, not... Was it this one? Because I didn't know what um, show this photo was from. I guess you bring. No, that was race. Stars. That was um, I played an an astronaut. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I something about pure pieces I like, and then um, mm -hmm. oh, we lost him again. Oh my goodness, he'll be back. He'll be back. Yes, he is an ambitious guy. He did say everything from his heart. Oh, here he is. Loading. It's loading. Hey. You got to be you got to be kidding me. It's like what three times I, like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Period pieces are awesome. Um like Man in the High Castle was a lot of fun. I personally mm. think mm -hmm. there's a, a certain romanticism or maybe it's just because I love like the De Niro and the Pacino that that era. I don't know. Um people are always kind of dressed up. It was it was it was a different era. You get the the hats and everyone smoked and drank and you had the I don't know. I there's a yeah. You look super. You look super cool in altered carbon. You were very suave and grounded. I felt. Oh right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was a. Great, I mean, or I'm sorry. Thing. Sorry, not not altered carbon. Uh, my mistake. Uh, the man in the high castle. That's what I meant. Both were both were good. Very different. But yeah, yeah. Both, both both were were nice. And yeah, man in the high castle. They, wow. They. They did a fantastic job. It was a, a complete honor to be on that show and to work with. Um, Joel Duet De La Fuente, who played uh, Inspector Keto, played such a good, badass guy. Mm -hmm. In real life, he's like the nicest, sweetest human being. Like, not just like, oh, yeah, nice guy, but like, yeah. like, like overly so. Yeah. It's interesting. But Paul Paul Dezanku, who plays Ronnie in Need for Speed Most Wanted, when I had him on for an interview, his theory, and I actually think he's kind of right, is that people who play really good bad guys are often the nicest people in real life, and then the people that play really nice characters are sometimes surprisingly not who you'd think they would be in real life. I mean, obviously, <laughs> that's a gross generalization, but I've, I've known some... Uh, people but anyway yeah there might be some truth to that well we'll yeah. just we'll just say them so maybe story. maybe that's why you get cast as a lot of uh antagonist villains oh well, i'll take that as a compliment then i guess <laughs> oh i like this comment holy this is actually happening <laughs> um <laughs> So another deep question for you. What are some of your goals career-wise and life-wise? What would make Kevin happy? In my life? Yeah, uh, like what do you what do you want to see for yourself going forward? I mean, I'd love to keep on acting even when I'm like 85 years old. Uh, that would be uh. cool. um I had um so again you a little would, bit sentimental. You would be you would be so cool. Like I would love to see that actually. You into your eighties acting. It'd be it'd be a lot of fun and the great profession we were able to do that. Um mm -hmm. I'll go a little bit sentimental in, in that because whatever, I don't care. Um you guys get to see me sold naked right now. Uh, when I was first acting, probably in my early 20s, I had a friend who was an actor and he said, hey, what's your, um, what's your like mission statement? I'm like, well, what are you mm. talking about? Like, what's your, but like, why, why are you an actor? Yeah. And I thought, well, that's a pretty, that's a heavy question. But let me, let me think about that and get back to you. So I took, okay, maybe not that long, but it took about a week, honestly. And I'm glad my friend asked me that because it's still something that I, 
um, that is part of me today and that, that, um, that propels me forward. And that is, if I can be, if I can be part of a project, whether that's in front of the camera, behind the camera, or somehow involved in a project mm -hmm. where if an audience member sees it and they're affected by it, much like you would be um, affected by a really good piece of music that affects you in a time or you, or you, you see, if I can be part of a project and that person is just a little bit nicer to their husband, their wife, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, hopefully even a complete stranger, just even for, cause I'm a realist. I know it's not, you know, the likelihood of actually a, uh, a film or a show changing someone's life, someone's life is, is probably not that realistic, but if, if they can just be a little bit nicer, say hello, hold the door open for someone, just be a little bit mm. kinder. Then I feel like I've done my job as a human being. Um, I felt that way when I did my um, my play. My whole goal was if someone, one person in the audience was just just a little bit nicer because they were affected, mm. then I've done my job as a human being. And I, I felt, I want to be conservative. I really felt that a fair amount of my roles have been able, to, or the projects I've been involved in ha had the ability to do, to do that. And I yeah. would say one, it does, I recognize, look, not every show has that, but if even one out of ten shows, then then it's it's worth it to me. Idealistic, sure, but hey, hey, I'm a fucking I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm an actor. I'm an actor. <laughs> um, that, that's what I'm here for. So mm -hmm. I like to continue to obviously act. Um, I tried writing. I thought I'd be a pretty good writer because you know we read tons of scripts, right? Tons yeah. of scripts. I thought, oh, dude, dude. wow, that's that's. Uh, it's a challenge. It's difficult, but I'd I'd love to write, and if if possible, I'd I'd, I'd be thrilled to produce projects that I believe have um, have some heart and soul. Mm. So, I need to do and obviously act great parts. I love playing gangsters. I love playing bad guys. I love playing you know I don't know uh, World War Two whatever. Um, just con I, I'm I'm a heavy drama guy. I, I like that. I like yeah. stories about humanity, and soulfulness. So. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's me. I love that. What advice would you give to young actors? Um, ask yourself the question of why you want to be an actor, much like my friend asked me. And, mm -hmm. uh, don't give a crap what anyone thinks because only you know you feel it inside of your heart of what you want to do and mm. uh give it your all give it your all um be kind you know be be, be compassionate yeah. to others think so um but a lot of actors we're our own worst critics so be kind to your as well and just keep on working it and the best thing is just truth and connection so um, st study, study, mm -hmm. study, study, but at the same time, I've studied with many different teachers throughout the years, and it was like there was n no specific one that oh it's it's yeah this method or that, but every single one of them lent me to be able to find find myself, yeah, uh, if that makes sense, yeah, and so or that's just how I work, and and maybe other people. Um, for example, when I was working uh, in Montreal, I was working with um, Michael Riley, a Toronto actor, and he, he's won a lot, like all the awards, whatever. Um, and he was very cerebral on set, right? I would see mm -hmm. him, and he'd, he'd have his, his script and all these little notes and then the, the different thing, like very well thought out. Um, very introverted. I remember he would, he would go to his trailer all the time, but his performances were just amazing. On mm -hmm. the same show, there's a fellow, uh, Lothair Blue Till, he played... Um, um black robe jesus of montreal uh very well celebrated in uh in montreal and i guess amongst french canadian speaking uh, people that watch films and he was the exact opposite in that he'd be telling he'd be telling jokes and you know they'd be like you know and actually he'd still be telling jokes and everyone would get the uh, the headphones just to listen to him because they were so funny but he'd be he'd be right into it and i remember watching him there was, there'd be a scene and one, one eye would tear up just, <gasps> oh! and then, but he would, he would ignore it. 
and then just go on and I don't know, put a piece of carrot in his mouth and just it was so subtle, so beautiful. <gasps> oh, was, that is so like, beautiful. What are you? What's your method? And he was like, I'm just, I'm just a sad guy. I was like, come on, that's not your. That's. Oh. Uh, I was also. Those were yeah. I I had worked quite a bit. I had a decent resume, but those guys were absolute veterans, and I learned a lot. And what was nice was, in my mind, analytically, I can think, yeah, of course, there's different methodologies. But it was nice to see such a spectrum of a very cerebral and then very visceral. And they both work, which means anything in between works. And sometimes I'm more cerebral, sometimes I'm visceral. It all depends on the role and on the scene. But uh, yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. Okay, travel question. That was a great answer, by the way. Thank you. Travel question. Where is somewhere in the world that you would love to travel to? Already to Japan. Um, I heard Iceland's very nice. Mm -hmm. Machu Picchu, I'd visit. That would be mm -hmm. freaking amazing. Um, yep. Peru? Uh, Rome, Greece, Italy. I want to see mm. the ruins. Um, Wow. Yeah, and since you know what's going on in the world right now, we're all kind of uh, not traveling, but everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Eat all, the food, all the food. It's like uh, going to Japan. I remember thinking, "Oh, this is how it's supposed to taste." Oh, I get it now. <laughs> or, or as a kid, I remember. I think my mom would make um, cabbage rolls, and I was like, "I don't like cabbage rolls." But then I went to a uh, I want to say Hungarian fam. Anyways, the the the, um, the mother there made cabbage rolls, and they're, they're like the most delicious thing. So I want to taste all the, the the real food how it should be. Yep yeah. my my mom makes amazing cabbage rolls, and I have yet to ever try. I, I can't even try anyone else's because everyone else does it so different than the way my mom does it, and my mom just does it the best, in my opinion. Of Maybe, course, I'm yeah, of oh. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. So I hey, think you. Me, so, uh, where is a place that you've already been that you love? Would that be Japan? Kyoto, Kyoto, Japan. I like. I loved uh, Tokyo. <sighs> uh, Tokyo was like uh, New York, except people spoke Japanese. It was very interesting. But Kyoto, I think, was the only major city in japan that wasn't bombed during world war ii so they still have a lot of temples their downtown is probably about four blocks and i think the tallest building is like six stories but most of the city is is, is only two stories in a strange way it reminded me kind of a burnaby if you know what burnaby is like <laughs> it's just a <laughs> suburb but uh food incredible you can still see maybe one out of a hundred people wearing a kimono mm -hmm. that like, uh, I don't know what for, but um, really, really nice. Yeah, that's the city I'd like to revisit. Um, it, it's for Canada, uh, Montreal. I, what a, yeah. I love, that. I love that city. Great yeah. people, great food. The, they have like a, a, what, the joie de vivre? The, the joy of joie life. Joie de vivre, yeah. Joy of life, yes. What you said, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Beautiful place. Yes, amazing. Summertime. Not in November or December. It gets too cold, in my opinion. <laughs> I lived there for a little yeah, bit in, in Montreal, Canada, and it be, when it got too cold, I was like, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. How do you stay healthy mentally and physically? Well, you mentioned yoga. Yeah, um, uh, just regular workouts. I... Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly dumbbells at home um i used to hike the gross grind a lot so hiking was great uh anytime being around nature i'm fortunate to be about a few blocks away from the water so i can just walk if i want to clear my mind and just i look yeah. at the ocean and the way waves come in uh, that's really nice um no matter where you are yeah um yoga is great i don't know music uh, the regular the regular stuff 
Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> the regular oh, stuff. The classics, yeah. The, the classic stuff. Honestly, all it is is just getting all the, the crap and the extra noise that's coming in through your mind. Um, we all mm -hmm. think a mile a minute. We have so many things coming towards us that it can be conflicting. And sometimes just getting out of nature. Or what I think that's what yoga does is because you have to focus on the pose. You can't think about anything else except for that pose. Otherwise, you fall over. So it's just... Right. It's eliminating all the uh, the extraneous BS crap that we're inundated with. So that's yeah. it. And everyone has that. It might be music. It might be driving for you, going for a nice drive, going for a walk in nature, yeah. eating a cheeseburger, whatever. I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. I actually made myself a cheeseburger last night because I was missing having a cheeseburger so much that I just made myself like – Homemade fries and homemade cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. I'm over. Some, sometimes you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've now been in quarantine for over a year. What are some good things you think that people can take out of this time in self quarantine? And can you share anything that you've learned uh, or good takeaways during this time? What's um, just reflecting what's important in life. Uh, I mean, clothes, we're all in freaking like, I don't know. I'm, I'm lazy. We're, we're, what's comfortable? What's important in life? And that's you. Mm -hmm. Honestly, friends, loved ones, laughing, connection, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, a good book. And I read a book in a long, a long time. Um, I picked up one and kind of put it down. But that, that, that would be a good thing. Uh, just, yeah, uh, self-reflection on good things. Um, in life and actually yes i get takeout but um <laughs> eating, eating eating more eating more at home preparing your your food savoring that and um i just think before we were in such like a, a go 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 that this allowed forcibly almost um for us to slow down and mm -hmm. uh, connect with that sort of stuff um so yeah that's that's what I think. I agree. Do you have a message for the fans? Thank you. Sincerely from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. You are what makes um, any performer, whether you're an actor or a musician, author, you're what we it's a joy to be able to uh, to do what we do. And thank you so much for um, support. And uh, um, we occasionally get uh, very nice comments from time to time. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, from my heart to yours, I'm sure from every other actor, author, musician, writer, painter, even if they don't say it, um, you're, you're what we do this for. So thank you so much. All everyone says, we love you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Love you yeah. too. Love you. Hey, we're all the. Somebody once said, "Look, it's like, uh, where is the camera?" So I think I'm. This, <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm, this, I think I'm this, this person. This person, and now this person is a loser. This person, and then we realize, wait a sec, we're all, we're all, we're all part of the same thing. We're all, mm. we're all connected. We all think we're, but we're all, we're all, we're all one. So, truthfully. Look, there's a few losers out there. Come on. If you have 10,000 people, there's mathematically speaking, you can have a few people that are a bit cranky. But in general, <laughs> in all honesty, I've been blessed with so many amazing people in all walks of life. So, yes. Uh, stay safe. Wonderful Aww. to hear from you. Love you. That too, is man. so awesome. So, do you have any projects coming out that we should all look out for? Uh, let's see. any announcements? I've done a few uh, since the pandemic thing opened up. I've done a few hallmarks. Uh, oh, nice! Done, yeah, uh, also, uh, the th Virgin River, the third season. I think my character probably will come back for a few on the if they go for a fourth season. Uh, the Babysitter's Club, um, uh, teen, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I I didn't know what it was about. Um, uh -huh. I played the dad of one of the girls. 
feel a bit old because of that, but uh, wonderful. Oh, yeah, but people. nowadays you can be like in your 20s and play an, a dad or a mom. Like TV is weird. It's like, yeah. I feel like as an actor, you could be like within five years of your son or daughter <laughs> and like you're still the parent. I don't know. The way they cast people. That's true. That's true. And that, so that, I, that group. I wouldn't be offended. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, yeah. And uh, wonderful. Those kids, those girls were all st still wholesome and, 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 and wonderful, and their moms were all great. And so that, uh, that was on the show. And oh, I got to voice a a, a really cool character on a, a, a big animated feature, which should go for, I'm hearing two or three um, more features uh i signed an nda so unfortunately i can't what it. But that's to give you an amazing idea, and i got to play with an accent which is so much fun <gasps> um I, I can't unfortunately i can't talk about it but it should, should be pretty good I give you an idea when i was um uh, when i was uh recording the people on the other end of the video they were saying oh yeah just today we wrapped the berlin symphony or orchestra was working <gasps> on some stuff so i have a i have a I have a small, right now, a small voice of one of the characters in this, I think, a pretty large animated feature. And I think the next one is supposed to be more involved with the character. I don't know. It's just cool. It's wow. it's so much fun. I, I love to do this. <gasps> that is so cool. Man, you are yeah. so busy. Well, no, thank you. My... Oh, go ahead. No, no. Just doing my thing. Thank you so much, Simone. And, and uh, as they say in YouTube land, uh, like, subscribe, share, smash that like button. <laughs> You're a wonderful and, and, uh, interviewer. And um, thank you mm. for, for having me. And thank you for everyone uh, uh, watching. Yes. Well, thank you for a wonderful interview, Kevin. I am so thrilled to have you on the show. It's really a treat to speak with such an accomplished actor such as yourself and you are most welcome back on the show anytime i really appreciate you and i know the fans do too for the fans if you'd like to stay connected i've put links in the description box below so you can find us there stay connected tune in next week for my exclusive live stream interview with actor Shaw Madsen who played Wolf in Need for Speed Carbon that is going down on Saturday April 10th at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you want more Need for Speed and celebrity interviews you can find those vids and more on my channel and I have other awesome videos coming soon so please subscribe so you'll be the first to know also, if you want autographed headshots, video shout outs, or want to hang out with me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, you can find me on Jemmy, which is just like Cameo. You can find me on jemmy.app slash Simone Bailey. That link is down below as well. Before we head off, listen to Bull. Okay, before we head off, click that like button, subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated and feel free to share this stream so others can enjoy this as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you stay healthy and happy. Till next time, stay safe, be kind to one another and keep playing Need for Speed. Take care everyone, love you all. Bye guys. Take care.